Hey number ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking and today I'd like to show you my new kettle hat. Okay, so first things first, I know some of you are going to ask me this question, you're going to say, hold on a minute, but are you sure that that's a kettle hat? That's not exactly the way we imagine the kettle hat to be, because usually most people imagine this to be a kettle hat, which it is. Um, that looks more, particularly from the back, looks more like a salad. Okay, so um, before talking about this specimen and who made it and how it was made, one thing that needs to be made clear when talking about the kettle hat is that this was a ubiquitous helmet in the Middle Ages. And we find it from the High Middle Ages all the way up to the Late Middle Ages and in most countries. Now, of course, yes, some uh, that we find in iconography as well uh, would represent this sort of helmet that I've showed you with a long brim but that doesn't mean that this is the only version possible of the kettle hat because again we are going we are going to span for what five centuries four centuries of a helmet to continue to be issued and modified and adapted and again we will have a regional variation as well and personal preference so this is still a kettle hat yes the back is similar to a uh, salad and in fact some kettle hats were similar to salads this is a specific replica made by a craftsman of Taurica, and you will find a link in the description below. One of my favorite craftsmen in terms of medieval armor reproduction, and they are also very, very reasonable as far as the pricing is concerned. So very cheap, high quality, high end craftsmen, highly suggested, highly recommended. So if you want to get armor, but you don't have much of a budget, but you still want something to be tailored and historically accurate, and beautiful, if, if I might add, uh, then definitely check them out, check out their Facebook page and tell them that you are noble ones from the Metatron community. Right, so this is a specific replica of this. So this is a um, kettle hat, Italian made, and it was dated in towards the end of the uh, 15th century, so 1470, 1490. So again, it's a later version of a kettle hat. Now, originals by the 15th century most likely would have been made or raised by a single sheet of steel. Uh, what about this? Well, this replica instead, uh, we basically have two sheets of steel that were folded, uh, welded together. Um, the reason being that that way it's a lot cheaper to produce. And of course, craftsmen of Taurica like many other craftsmen out there, they can raise a helmet from one single sheet of metal, but it's a much more difficult and, and complicated process and therefore the price will rise up a lot. And considering the fact that I think it's a fantastic replica, because I mean, look at it, they look almost identical. They've done an excellent job. Um, I'm happy with it the way it is, and I was happy with it very, very cheap. Um, as far as the uh, thickness of the steel, well, it's mild steel, a pearl polished, because they are very good at polishing. And again, this this is the armor that is producing for me a full suit of armor of late 15th century northern Italian style, um, which is, if you want to know more about the suit of armor that I'm going to get, you'll find again a link in the description below to the crowdfunding campaign that I have initiated a few months ago. And I still haven't managed to gather as much money, that, all the money that I need to get the, the entire suit of armor, but I did order the breastplate, the backplate and the fold. So we are getting to it little by little and it's all thanks to you of course. So thank you so much to all of you who are believing in this project. And yes, I will be making lots of content with this and we will be examining every single piece in a whole series dedicated to the medieval knight of Europe. So why did I order a kettle hat? Well, first it was too cheap not to get it. So I decided to use a little bit of Patreon money to get this. And my Patreons, of course, are going to get a whole range of pictures because basically they got it for me. But again, it was very cheap. They sold it to me for 300 euros, which is an excellent price for a helmet like this. And it's perfect exactly for my head, so measurements and all. So it's a very good helmet. And that's again, one thing that you don't get with off the shelf Indian made helmets. They often tend to be too big or perhaps sometimes too small. But sometimes I see them to be because they go for very generous measurements because they want to fit as many people as possible. This is tailored and it's perfect for my head. In fact, that makes it a lot more comfortable and has a very good high quality uh, lining inside for comfort. And again, I've worn it for uh, an entire afternoon and it was very, very, very cool. And um, so what sort of helmet is it who would have used it well kettle hats were mostly used by soldiers they were used by men at arms infantry but they were also used by crossbowmen for example uh, namely the uh, genoese crossbowmen so it's a helmet that has a lot of advantages would it be used by knights well generally speaking it's a little bit a little bit on the cheap side 
for um, catching the interest of the mounted nobility but this does not mean that knights didn't use it and again remember when we say knights we mean people who are knighted who have got a title okay so sometimes you will have men at arms who are not technically knights but they fight in the manner of the knight they wear full plate armor and some of them in iconography are shown wearing a kettle hat but what about the knights the occasional knight will surely own a kettle hat would they use it well sometimes because a kettle hat does have some advantages a kettle hat is a simple design but it gives you extremely good ventilation and very good vision and these are all things that perhaps if you are in the, on the battlefield and you're wearing your armet and been wearing it all day and it's obviously a heavier helmet um, to wear and yes you can raise your visor and whatnot but you know occasionally you might find yourself um, wanting to have something lighter perhaps because you don't think that the enemy is close enough but you still want to wear something you don't want to have nothing uh, you, you don't want to have um, you do want to have some protection in your head just in case then it could be a good idea to switch to a kettle hat and we know that it was done there are documents and Ian Laspina uh, in at uh, Knight Errant's channel mentioned this there are uh, French documents that talk about a, a French knight talking to his king and, and advising the king to remove his fully visored helmet and just switch to a kettle hat so that you can get some wind that's basically what it says and big thanks to Ian Laspina for finding that interesting quotation so in this case as I said it's mild steel it's two millimeters thick so this muppet it's 14 gauge this is proper combat helmet uh, but regardless of that um, it's actually very well made and it's not too heavy I'm um, wearing it for an entire afternoon I started feeling the weight and that's one of the reasons why I actually did what many many evil soldiers did so I just um, loosened the uh, or you know simply I undid uh, the fastening the fastening the the leather straps and I just wore it backwards just a little bit more in a relaxed style is something that Matt Easton talks about on Scholar Gladiatoria channel I'll see if I can gather all these uh, links to these videos that I'm mentioning I'll put them all in the description below um, but it's a sort of more relaxed way of wearing helmets that we know soldiers have been doing not only in the Middle Ages but have been doing since classical times and we know that Romans did it well well not really the Romans the Romans will wear their helmets on their bosom uh, during March they wouldn't even wear them to get some fresh air but we know the Greeks did it and most likely the Romans during the Kingdom of Rome since they were using Greek inspired helmets similar to the Corinthian style we know that they would wear them up on top of their forehead and we know this um, to the point that we can see it in sculpture as well for example most representation of goddess Athena well she's wearing a Corinthian helmet but the relaxed way and we know medieval people did it I tried it with this one and it was it really made a heck of a difference I'm sure the medieval di uh, soldiers did it Okay, so one of the reasons why I got this is because, again, I could have it as a secondary helmet for my nightly set. Of course, eventually, in the future, when I will be able to afford it, I'll get a full armet, because, again, northern Italian style. But this is, again, a, a secondary helmet that a knight would have uh, owned. And even if I'm not the one wearing it all the time, when I do have my nightly set of harness, set of armor, the harness, I can have a crossbowman near me. Or I could replicate, you know, with, given enough funds and time, I could replicate a Genoese crossbowman full set and that could be interesting because if we do get to um, have a uh, Genoese crossbow proper replica then it would be really cool and I think it's it fits the channel because I would be reenacting both a medieval knight a Milanese knight and a Genoese crossbowman they won't try it quite a bit Okay, but anyways, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to show you a little bit this helmet, which is a very, very good replica, to show you that I am started, I have started finally to get some proper stuff. In fact, I apologize for this gambus, I'm not very good, but I have ordered a good 15th century army doublet, again, f through the crowdfunding from a northern Italian tailor, and I'll give you all the information, and this it should be, it should arrive here in about three weeks. So that's, again, something that you will be seeing on this channel. So I'm going for a more historically accurate approach now and um, this breastplate is pretty good though um, and if you are curious to know why I've got two well this is steel and this is titanium uh, they were made by Forjo's van and uh, again very very cheap but still excellent and um, it's, it's quite good quality and it's tailored for my body uh, of course titanium I basically you, you could you just forget you're wearing it because it's super light but if you're interested in knowing the difference between titanium armor and steel armor I've got a dedicated video that I made in a co in collaboration with Ian Laspina from Night Errant channel and you'll find again a link in the description below.
All right, noble ones. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're not yet a member of this community, become a noble one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.